Officials from the Centers for Disease Control are in Dallas today, tracking down people who may have come into contact with the first U.S. diagnosed Ebola patient. Welcome to your Wednesday lunch break, everyone. I'm Tanya Rivero. The unnamed patient who traveled from Liberia to Dallas before becoming sick is being treated in an isolation unit at a Dallas hospital. And according to the CDC, whether the people he came into contact with have been infected won't be known for another three weeks. For more analysis, we're joined now by Dr. William Schaffner, a professor at Vanderbilt University Medical Center and an infectious disease expert. Dr. Schaffner, thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Tanya. Good to be with you. So, doctor, what do we know about this man who has been in who this man has been in contact with since his return from Liberia and more alarmingly while he was briefly released from the hospital? Yeah, we don't know too many of the details yet because they're being kept somewhat confidential. But we do know that while he was sick, he was cared for by family members. And the public health department is going to be screening those family members, putting them under surveillance, and then finding out all of his other contacts since the time he became sick and watching them also. It's since he became sick because it's at that point that the individual becomes communicable to others and then only if those people have had contact with that person's body fluids. That's good to know that you're not infectious if you are not yet showing symptoms, correct? That's correct. If you're not showing symptoms, you're not infectious to others. I've received the question about how about when he was on that airplane? He was not ill. He was not hazardous. I would have felt comfortable sitting directly in the seat next to him. Okay, so then the CDC does not need to also track down all the people, the people he's been in contact with, have been in contact with. <laughs> yes, we don't do the multiplication game, although we do move out in what are called concentric circles. The group most at risk who had the closest contact, then they will assess the next group that had somewhat less contact, and so on out. So there will be a sense of trying to expand that group and provide comprehensive surveillance focused on the time when the person became ill. And what kinds of questions are doctors asking his family and others who may have been in contact with him while he was sick? Meaning, what kinds of contact is the kind of contact that spreads this disease? Well, it's principally contact with blood and body fluids. Did the patient vomit? Did they have diarrhea? Did you have to clear their mouth? Uh, did you wash his mouth out with a washcloth? Those kinds of things. So how close was the contact? How intimate? What sorts of actual activities did you undertake? And they'll be taking the temperature of all of those contacts on a daily basis, perhaps even twice a day, to determine if they themselves get fever, because that's often the very first sign of impending illness. And then they could be provided medical care immediately. And doctor, given that people are still traveling between the U.S. and the West African countries where the Ebola outbreak continues, it's not surprising someone in the U.S. has now been diagnosed. Should we expect more cases soon? Are all U.S. hospitals on alert right now? We've had ex we've been expecting something like this. So we expect further cases from time to time as people do travel from West Africa. And yes, hospitals, my own included, have reviewed all of our infection control precautions, have paid particular attention to Ebola related infection control. And we've even had a drill where we've We've had a fake patient come into our emergency room and be moved to our intensive care unit, and we've watched all that happen. We've tweaked a few things as a consequence. Drilling is important, just like in a fire drill when you were in school. So uh, I think hospitals here are prepared, just as this hospital was in Dallas. But didn't this hospital release him at first, misdiagnosing his fever? I'm not sure where he first went to an emergency room or clinic, mm -hmm. but that's worthy of review mm -hmm. because it's very important. If a patient presents with fever, we have to ask, have you traveled outside the United States? And if so, where? Those questions are powerful in providing an assessment of the possibility of Ebola. Absolutely. Now, the Texas Department of Health posted this tweet just about an hour ago saying they've not conducted any additional Ebola tests and have no further suspected cases at this point. Can Americans be a little less worried about this now? I think Americans ought to be interested and also confident, confident in the health care system and in the public health system. We've got this 
in cooperation, under control. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Schaffner, for that. My pleasure.